Crumble Flag, Part Seven. Rules apply not to rulers. Oh yay! Oh yay! By order of their most royal majesties and Lord Crabtree the Cunning, Sheriff of Crumble Flat, Burger of the Hamlet, Prefect at Dunwich Elementary. The people of Crumble Flat are hereby directed never to go out of doors unless it is absolutely necessary. If any person should have need, perchance for work, food, or lavatory relief, that person must refrain from touching, speaking, or indulging in sexual conduct. All persons are to remain the length of two sounds apart at any given time. Also, no persons are to leave the town so as not to propagate, proliferate, or in any way spread the child disease. Not only this, but to reduce any chances of further infection entering the town. Any person seen leaving the city will be sternly reprimanded at the hands of his lordship's torturer. Screaming agony brought to you by massive Merrick and his men. The cutting edge in cutting edges and all other methods of torture. Can't leave the town, eh? What if I want to visit me cousin? What about that, Cudmin, you crier, eh? I just read what they give me, good lady. Now, back away! Slowly! Uh. Crumbs! Mm -hmm. What is that smell? I'm crushing garlic. Miss Pestle, your majesty. Oh, yes. I see, Gondelman. Mm -mm. Really clears the nose, doesn't it? <laughs> Makes the old eyes water, eh? Oh, yeah, uh, no, no, no offence. <laughs> Sire? Uh, just, uh, you know, because uh, <coughs> you've uh, only, um, only one. Uh, um, yes, that's plenty, Vivian. Uh, yeah, yeah. Stunning work, as always. At least Crab Titan said rules will keep things under control in the town whilst you try and pin down this cure, Grundleburn. Quite so. I feel very close. Oh, so sorry, old it. I'll, I'll stand over there. Get out of your way. Hmm? Thank you, Your Majesty. I believe I have all the elements, Queen Ermintrude. It's just a case of getting them all in the right quantities, you know. How very exciting. Isn't this exciting, Vivian? Hmm? Oh, yes, yes, I, I, I'm sure. I say, old youth, what's this model over here? It's a mock-up of a flying machine, Your Majesty. Uh, a flying machine? And, uh, and what does that do? Well, it flies, doesn't it? Give me strength. Good Lord, uh, like, like a bird. Be quiet, Vivian. Oh, quite right. I looked into the future with my magic eye, Your Majesty. And they had a cure for the plague. Though it was in a very distant future. The images were hazy and indistinct, I'm afraid. I understand. Do you? Shh! They had a medicine called an antibiotic. This cast out all the evils that the plague infects the body with. True magic! Oh, a lot of old hokum, I say. Not magic, Majesty. Science. Uh, science, my left foot. They have somehow managed, these medical men of the future, to compound all the elements into a tiny lozenge no bigger than a fingernail. Alas, I have not the skill to do this. Not yet, maybe, Oldith. But I'd be willing to bet you could do it, given enough time. Mayhap you are right. Still, a tincture is the best I am able to conjure for now. You mean potion? Vivian! Well, I'm sorry, but you know what I think of all this stuff? Highly suspect. Highly. I have carefully weighed and measured out all the ingredients, Majesty. All that is left is to assemble them most carefully in this pot. 
<laughs> well, it's a cauldron, isn't it? Hmm? Let's be honest about it. Only a small one, though. What goes in first, Aldith? The wine first, please, Your Majesty. Steady on now, it's not even lunchtime. Just an ale for me, please. Now the garlic paste. That'll do nothing for the bouquet. Those stewed leeks next. Here you are, Aldith. Excellent. Honey? You're getting a little familiar there. Let's uh, let's just stick to your majesty, shall we? Hmm? Hmm? Yeah. And finally, the toad's juice. And you're trying to tell me this isn't witchcraft? Hmm? Oh, my! Jim Jam Flan Pan! Good grief! There, that should do it. Nothing scientific about it. Look at me. I'm covered in a soot. You did that on uh, on purpose, didn't you? Well, you can't begrudge me a little <laughs> flash and dazzle, can you? Oh, Aldith, you're a marvel. A <laughs> true marvel. <laughs> yes, a marvel. <laughs> I must... Who knew hats could ever be so heavy? Oh, I do. I suppose there are quite a few. Could I do to get rid of one or two? Leave the odd one behind? Ah, oh, Lord Crabtide. Jesus! Nay, verily. Let us praise him. I am always happy to go down on my knees for an impromptu prayer, brother. Yea, even in the dust and good heavens in horse muck. For my old bones are but the bones of an earthly servant. These rough robes but the garb of a lowly shepherd of manly flock. Oh, do get up, sackcloth. I don't have time for this. Not have time to praise our great lord, brother? No. I mean, obviously, I'd love to. Just not right now. I'm... I have to get... somewhere. <laughs> Thou art on a pilgrimage. I seeth that thou carry with you your essentials. Yes, just the bundle of a few things. A few thousand things, brother. Be your journey a long one? I really couldn't say. If it is, I would advise a lighter load. Yea, even through life, for what does man really need but his good book? A place to rest his head and love in his heart. Well, I like to rest my head in a hat or two. All right? We all of us have our weaknesses. Tis too true. Mine is my wretched knees. Couldn't give us a hand up, could you? Fine. Yes. Yay, verily, for he has risen. Look, I really have to get on. Just so. Let me help thee with thy pack. Hoig! There. On you go, goodly lord. Safe travels. Yup. Bye. I wonder where he goes with such haste. And such a mighty sack. Hey, uh, you know you're not meant to be out and about, don't you, Sig? Yeah, neither are you, Dahlia Mail. Yeah? Well, I was just fetching some cabbages from Mrs. Wretchbottom. I'm allowed to get food, ain't I? Yes. Now run along home. Straight home, mind. No stopping off at your neighbours to gossip. What you doing out, though, I? I'm working. What? Stood there doing nothing with your thumb up your bum. Don't look like you're working to me. Look here, Dahlia. I've been made a bailiff, see? I thought you was the alderman. Yeah, I'm that and all. And a swineherd. <laughs> I'm so busy, I've barely got time to wipe me <clears throat> Anyway, I'm the bailiff now. And that means I have to enforce the rules, you see? Make sure everyone is obeying the curfew. Curfew? Ain't that what everyone says when they smell you coming? <laughs> Hilarious. I'll have you know it's a very important job, don't you know? Lord Crabtite himself told me, see? I was to keep everyone in check. But he's the sheriff. Why don't he do it, eh? 
I don't know, Talia. Maybe he just didn't want to run into your ugly mug. Now bog off home before I take you to the castle dungeon, all right? Yeah, all right. Yeah, bye then. No, 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 I don't think I should be doing that, Lord Cryptite. What do you mean? I've just ordered you to open the town gate. Now get on with it. No, you see, Lord Cryptite, with the greatest respect, like, I'm not allowed to do that. Not allowed to? It's your job. It is the very essence of your position on Earth. You open the gate. Well, that's not strictly true, your lordship. See, as a gatekeeper, yes, part of my job is to open it, I grant you. But just as important is the closing of the gate, you see. I'm going to lose my patience in a minute. Now, it's not only the opening and closing of the gate. Good lord, no. No, you see, it's also the job of the gatekeeper. Well, any gatekeeper worth the name, that is, because there's plenty who aren't, mind you. So help me, God. Now, I know a gatekeeper works the gate at Bung Hole. Couldn't keep a gate if it were his livelihood, which it is, of course. He once closed it when he meant to open it. I mean, you really can't get it much stronger than that, can you? I'm actually going physically blind with rage. Oh dear. Anyway, uh, where was I? Oh yes, uh, any gatekeeper worth the name not only has to open and close the gate, but he's got to know when to open and close it, see? And I can't open it now, see? Not right at this moment. Why not? Don't get all hit up about it, my lord. It was you what said I couldn't. What? I've just spent the last hundred years of my life, it feels like, asking you to open it! Oh, yes, now you are, right now, yes, but before you said I wasn't to open it, see? When? When did I say this? It was in your edict, weren't it? Oh, that? Oh, for heaven's sake. I didn't mean me. You said no person was to leave the town. You didn't want to spread the plague or have it coming in again. Look at me. Do I look like I have the plague? Well, n- no, but you can't always tell at the beginning, can you? You might have it, just deep down, like... Listen, what's your name? Gary, my lord. Right then. Gary, if you don't open this drawbridge, they won't be calling you Gary the Gatekeeper anymore. They'll be calling you Gary the Gormless Git who got his head chopped off. Am I understood? Uh, Right. So... Yes, Gary? Uh, You know what? On this occasion, Lord Crabtide, I think it is the right moment to open the gate after all. Smart man. You'll go far. So long, Gary. So long, Crumbleflan. So long, poor, plagued, infested peasants. So long, moronic monarchs. I'm out of here. You wouldn't catch me dead in this town. Literally. Not worth it. Not worth all the hats in all the known world. Sticking around this festering foul tip. No, sir. Not me. Goodbye and good riddance. Hello, Lord Crabtite. Oh, bleeding heck. What is it with this fella? He's like the dung you step in, but you can't get off your boots. Wherever I go, there's this gut-turning stink right there with me. Chewie! What do you want, Sid? Just wonder where you were off to. None of your damn business, Sid. See, thing is, it is my business. What? I was talking to Dahlia earlier. Were you? Good for you. And she asked me a very good question, actually. Look, Sid. She asked, uh, seeing as you're the sheriff... Why wasn't you imposing the curfew that you ordered? Sid. And I guess we know why now, eh? You weren't planning on staying here to do it yourself. Bravo! You got me. I'm not hanging around here waiting to die, Sid. I'm clearing out. Do you understand? You can't stop me. Oh, but I can see. Because you made me the bailiff. And I've got to detain anyone trying to leave the town, ain't I? And here's your old pal, Massive Merrick, to help me out. Mother! You're nick me, old China. That was Crumble Flam, with Callum Hale as King Vivian the Vague, Philippa James as Queen Ermintrude the Organized, David Boyle as Lord Crabtite the Cunning, Jacqueline Johnson as Grundleburn the Great, Lewis Alcock as Elder Sackcloth, and Roger Parkins as Sid the Surf. <laughs>